Hi guys, welcome to this session. My name is Samir Mohammed, and in this session I'm going to show you how you can automate the site design creation in itself for modern SharePoint sites. Uh, this is part two of the series. In the first video I covered how to automate uh, the provisioning of sites from site design. So if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch it. And just to show you what was covered in part one, anything that you see in blue was covered, which is automating the site provisioning from site design. And I've also done a review of the technologies invo involved. Again, this was part one. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and take you through automating site design creation in itself. So basically, what I have is a set of authorized users, you know, wanting to go ahead and create site designs. But the issue with that process is that site design, like creating the site design itself, it, it requires IT to go ahead and run some PowerShell scripts, which is something that a lot of times business users don't have access to. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So this is a site that I have. <clears throat> and I named the site as list of site designs and so this is a site that only authorized business users who have permissions to create sites who have permissions to 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 templatize site sites will have access to it and what they will do here is that they will come in here and then they will basically just just enter the site that they have and create a site design out of that for other users to provision sites if you don't know how business users will be creating will be creating sites from the site design, then let me go ahead and show that to you. Click on SharePoint and this basically takes me to the SharePoint homepage. Click on create site. And I'm gonna go ahead and select team site. And this gives me the site designs. Team site and then so team site is a default which comes to SharePoint and then consumer retail site template is a custom one that I've created. If I click on this and then enter my new consumer site <clears throat> click on next and this is provisioning a site for me this is going to take some time because there's a lot of uh, content behind uh, the site design template so it's going to take some time we're going to come back and take a look at it but when I'm actually done uh, right within 30 seconds what you see is the default site which is created and again there's a lot that's happening you can actually see what's happening behind the scenes applying site design we are updating your site based on the design you choose so this is going to take quite some time even though it says that the site design has been done and I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you in a lot more detail so this part of actually provisioning a site from site design and what's happening behind the scenes this has been created in part this has been done in part one and this what I'm gonna show you is how you come across the how you provision the part where the user clicks on create site and then the user can see here the consumer retail site template <clears throat> so for that let's go back to my site here I have the list of site designs and I want to create a, a brand new site design over here so basically click on new and then I'm gonna enter the URL of the site and this is a site like what I have here okay so this is let's just say that uh, the authorized business user uh, you know they have created this consumer retail site and they want users to be provisioning from this site okay and it's got some highlights up in the top like for example products they click on products and it basically has got this fancy view as well and then you can have uh, SharePoint artifacts in here you can have uh, permissions broken down you can have news articles over here content site, site content pages over here and all of that will, will actually come over and that's something which I have covered in detail in part one so let's go back and then I'm gonna name this as retail site and then the status over here is new because I have two different statuses here new and update and when I'm adding a brand new site design the status will be new but when I'm updating an existing uh, site design just because uh, you know me as an authorized business user have gone into the site and added more more artifacts added some more new content into it and I want users to go ahead and create templates out of the new content then that's when there's going to be the update option but in my case I'm going to select new site design description this is a site for for retail and all users should be using this 
and then site design template I know that this is a team site so I'm gonna select a team site and then target audiencing this is a very interesting concept over here I can enforce that only a certain audience will see the site design when it's uh, you know when it's uh, created so for example if I have an accounting site then I want only the accounting department or people of the accounting department to see this site design then this is how I can limit the scope this is known as scoping uh, in my case I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it open I want anybody in the whole organization to be able to use this retail site click on save and that's all I do so as soon as I do this then let me go ahead and show you what's happening behind the scenes so this is actually the right <clears throat> float that I wanted to show you the last one that I ended up showing by mistake was for the part one so me as an authorized business user I add an entry in a SharePoint list and as soon as this happens then the URL of the site to be templatized is entered which I've just done it and this opens up uh, a power automate this actually fires up a power automate it kickstart this process on the item creation event in itself and as soon as power automate fires then the only thing that it does is it creates queue entries uh, and these are the Azure queues and there's an Azure queue by the name export PNP provisioning template so just an entry is being added to this Azure queue that hey a new site is being provisioned a new site design is is, is, uh, the, is being created and an Azure function picks up that message and the Azure function basically exports the whole site like the whole site which needs to be templatized it exports the whole site into an XML file and this is the XML file which is used when this when users are provisioning sites from the site design and again this is something that I've covered in part one and then right after that after an XML file has been exported out then this is where another process is being uh, called and and this Azure function adds the site design to SharePoint so that now users can start provisioning files from it provisioning sites from it and after that user can now see the new site and the new site page so let me go ahead and show you the flow that fires when a when a new site design URL is added in my list over here so when an item is created or modified that's when it's fired and then create request to export template and this is the first thing that happens and this is the Azure queue the only thing that's being passed with Azure queue is the site template URL and then the name of the site which is like retail site in my case and then the URL of the site uh, site template and and when this is fired then uh, then an Azure function is keeping an eye on this queue and the Azure function then takes up the task of reading these two parameters and then creating which is exporting the whole XML out of this new site uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the queue here so I'm in Azure portal right now uh, actually right here so I'm in Azure portal right now and then these are a list of all my queues and these queues are extremely rudimentary they don't have much of functionality here so uh, export PNP provisioning template this is the name of my queue and if I go in here then just a message would be live so right as soon as the message kicks in the flow kicks in and if you come over here you probably might be able to even for a second see the parameters which have come in here and after that the export PNP provisioning template Azure function picks up that message and this is what we have in the function so let's go ahead and review what I have in it so number one this is the parameter which is which is basically passed uh, which is the site design name and then the site template URL and then after that uh, this is the PNP provisioning command PNP provisioning PowerShell script which is being ran and this exports out this site in my case it was this consumer retail site so it basically exports this whole site out as an XML file and this XML file is basically stored in a certain location which can be accessed by the 
provisioning process when a user is creating a new site design out of it. And then so, so let's go ahead and review this PNP provisioning PowerShell uh, template. Uh, so PNP provisioning template PowerShell command. As you can see that, so handlers is supposed to be all. So everything which is in there, I want all of that to be exported. Persist publishing file. This is pretty important parameter. When this parameter is entered, then it makes sure that any of the published files, like for example, the news articles and then the associated images with the news articles are being exported out as well. Persist branding files include all client side pages. So this is where any any of the modern side pages, like for example, the news pages, all of that news pages is being exported out. Include side groups parameter is extremely important. This makes sure that if you have any kind of permission levels which you have created, brand new permission levels that you have created, or if you have any kind of SharePoint security groups that you have created, and if you have any permissions which are broken down as well, then all of that is being exported out into an XML file. So, and that's basically it. That's all I have in here. Uh, and after that, it's, the function just dies out after exporting everything over to XML. So let's go back to my flow real fast. So so with this process, this is what's happened. The whole site has been exported out as an XML file. But then the site design is still not visible for the users to create sites from. And that's what's happening over here. So over here, if it's, so what I'm saying is that if this is a new site, then I have to add the site design entry into the new site SharePoint page. And there's a certain delay process over here. I'm saying that, hey, just wait for a few minutes for this export to template process is done. There could be better ways of doing it instead of just having a delay. I have a delay for one minute, but a good delay time might be 10 minutes. But right after that, what's happening is that I'm invoking the second step where I'm saying that I'm passing a message to another Azure queue, and this Azure queue is responsible for, uh, for invoking an Azure function which adds a site design to the SharePoint page. So let's go ahead and take a look at this queue over here, Manage Site Design. So go back to my Azure portal, go back to my queues over here, and in here I see this just queue over here which is Manage Site Design, and there's an Azure function which is keeping an eye on this Manage Site Design, which is Create Site Design. And this is the code which is configured. This is the code which is written in this Azure function. So let's go ahead and read it out, <coughs> getting a list of all the parameters, and then connecting to the site. And then right after that, uh, so this is where I'm creating a site script. So site script is what gets is is the code within the site design in itself. And and over here. I'm specifying an action and if you have an understanding of the site script and then these actions, there's a limited number of actions that you can write in here. 30 actions and uh, the most that you can write down is 300 actions over here. And each action is really one action. For example, if you're creating a column in a list, then that's one action. So which basically means that if you were creating columns, then you can just create 300 columns, okay? So which is extremely limited. That's why what we are doing here is that we use only one action here, which is calling a flow. And this flow is being called, and this flow basically takes care of the whole provisioning process. And right after that, and for details of this flow, please take a look at my part one video. This flow basically is the tip of the iceberg for provisioning the site and applying the site design to the provision site when users are uh, creating a new site. And when this site script is ready, then I'm adding the site script into a site design, and the site design is basically added to the SharePoint site. So after this PowerShell command, you will see the retail site. So going back to my list of site designs, so remember we have the retail site written over here. This is what this is what will be visible to the users under site design. So let's go back and see if it's visible or not. By the way, while, while I'm over here, uh, if you ever wanted to know how this 
Azure function is configured to monitor the Azure queue, then you click on, uh, actually you click on integrate here, and this is where you write down the queue name. And once this is done, then Azure function knows that it's got to keep an eye on it. It's just as basic as that. So I'm going to click on create site, and then I know that I created a site design for team site, and then let's click on this drop down and see what I get, and there it is, retail site. Click on that, and then I'm going to cr create the, the site from this new site design, which is my retail site. Click on next. And then the new site just appears, but the but the design, but the site design has not been applied to it. So it's going to take some time before the site design applies to it. If your site design is very bulky, like it's got a lot of news articles, it's got a lot of images, it's got a lot of uh, you know artifacts within it, then it probably might take some time. So let's be a little patient. So I had to be patient for a good five minutes, and so this is what came across. The only thing that did not come across is my original site was basically a hub site. So any sites associated with those hub site and content coming from that did not come, come along with it. But everything else did, like for example, if I go to site content over here, then any of the site pages that I had, like for example, there's already five pages loaded in here. Uh, and then uh, and then site assets has got two images over here. So all of that came across. Uh, if I click on products here, and you can see that uh, that there are three lines within the products list. This did not come across. The content does not come across. What I did is that I manually entered this because I wanted to show you that this list basically has got uh, some formatting on it, which is this JSON. So this came across. So anything which is the artifact in itself that comes across the content, except for news and the site pages, that comes that comes with it, but the content, like for example, this list is never going to come along. Uh, and that's basically it. So with this process, what you have is uh, is how you can provision, how you can automate the site creation process. In it. Thank you so much for watching this video and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions.